First of all, listen, uh, it's interesting about all these young guys today. They never call on us and say, hey, thanks for the kind word and tell me how great a player I am. But when they play like crap and we call them out, they, we don't know what we're talking about. Listen, I'm easy to find, but I get sick of these guys complaining. Uh, these you, young guys, they never call us and say, when a coach is wrong, I'm going to call him out. But when players are wrong, I'm going to call them out. But listen, I'm going to criticize guys that they deserve it. And listen, they can kiss my ass if they don't like it. What's going on, YouTube? Happy Taco Tuesday. Hope everyone's Tuesday's going well. Hope everybody's staying safe. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I know I did. Um, weekend went just go by fast. I really cannot wait till we get our hour of sleep back with the daylight saving time. I don't see the whole point of that at all. I really don't. But um, before we get into the video, there's a few things I need to say up front. <clears throat> Welcome to this is episode 18. Yes, of the podcast. Um, in this video, I'm going to recap this weekend. It's great football. Um, I wanted to talk about John Gruden and some more things that came out um, with his in those emails. I'm also going to talk about WNBA Game 2 Finals for WNBA Finals Game 2 Preview. A couple other things happened in the WNBA. There's a couple of things that happened in the NBA to talk about that as well. Um, Nick Rosario reached out to me and wants to do a um, a recap of the division, MLB division series. Um, the Boston Red Sox advanced, the Houston Astros advanced, and the Boston Boston Braves, the Atlanta Braves, excuse me, they defeated the Milwaukee Bucks. So we're going to have Nick Rosario probably sometime <sighs> I'm looking at Thursday or Friday. Now, episode season three will end this upcoming Sunday. I have a surprise for you. I have three guests that I hope to have on the um, I'm, that will be on the podcast. We're going to talk, give our basketball takes uh, for the season. So that will conclude season three. Season four will start the conclusion when and when the start of the NBA. And also, too, you know, we'll still have the WNBA. I'm going to try to get college football in there. I'm going to try to get some hockey. But um, really, it's just the NFL and the NBA, honestly, truthfully. And anything else that's happening around, you know, the social world. But uh, with that being said, uh, real quick, if you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, you want to see more of it, be sure to hit that subscribe button along with notification bells on. Be sure to give this podcast, this video a thumbs up. And also share the podcast with your friends, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to trans. We're going to start off the night with football. Um, I'm not going to even sit here and act like I didn't know this was coming. Why act like I know this was coming? Because I did it. So um, if you remember, I did a video. Where I guarantee, I guarantee that the Buffalo Bills would beat the Kansas City Chiefs. I got that right. Was a little surprised of the of the, the score. Um, the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm sorry, they got their ass whooped, 38-20, um, which was a bit surprising. Um, this was an AFC championship rematch. The Kansas City Chiefs defense, it, it's trash. I, I, I mean, their defense, they just, the honey badger, <laughs> um, they're just, they're not, they're, they're not, they're not the same defense. They, they really aren't. Um, I mean, let me just say this. The Chiefs lost this game because I don't think they knew how to respond to Buffalo after getting punched in the mouth. Um, they just couldn't get into a rhythm. I, I didn't see that. I know Edwards, ha, ha, Edwards, Hilaire got hurt with a knee injury. I hope he was doing well. 
Um, Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey couldn't make couldn't make plays at all. I mean, body language showed like man. Uh, I mean, there were a, there were a few times in the game where Kansas City's defense made a play a couple times, but they just they looked like they just flat out just where it's just trash. Um, I mean, the secondary was getting torched. And the Honey Badger, you know, he there's one point where he just threw his hands up like, damn. Um, I, I, I would, you know, I, I have said this, and I will continue to say it again, that the, that the Kansas City Chiefs are not the same team defensively. I mean, just because they still have Tyreek Hill, Charles Kelsey, and Miko Hartman, that defense, that defense is key. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from Josh Allen because Josh Allen had one hell of a game. You know, and my notes here, You know, when you look at what he did, I have said it for the record, I'll continue to say it again. Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson were the two best quarterbacks coming out of their draft class. The Buffalo Bills, the San Diego, uh, excuse me, the Los Angeles Chargers, and I'm going to put the Baltimore Ravens there. They are – the AFC is now open. It's It doesn't go through Kansas City. Sunday night you saw a power change. Dawson Knox looked good out there. Stephon, I mean, Stephon Diggs only caught two passes. I don't really know how that happened. Uh, Cole Beasley didn't – he was really, really wasn't out there. Um, the only thing I don't like about their defense is Tremaine Edwards is a liability on the run. Um, he definitely didn't do his job to me. But again, I'm, let me go back to Kansas City. You know, my notes here, they just are out of sync. Uh, without Ed, Edwards Hilaire, they just had no running game. Um, I still can't believe Tyreek Hill and my, my eyes on the scene when I looked at the stats. He only had he 14, he was targeted 14 times. With only one really play that had a plus of 15 plus yards. That that can't happen. Um the offensive line still, I feel like is getting in sync. Uh, their their defense, the defensive line, Chris Jones didn't play. They couldn't really get any pressure to Josh Allen. Uh, <laughs> they're, oh my gosh, I, I, and I, I get it. You know, they're still kind of getting it together, but their secondary, you gave up. I mean, was it Daniel Sorison? That's his name. Yes, was getting was, was just getting burnt. Um, according to the stat, I saw this, this is on Twitter. He's now allowed 14.3 yards per target this season. That's among the third worst defenders through this week. LaJarius Sneer also didn't look good as well in that game. I mean, their defense, that's what's going to hurt Kansas City. I mean, you can sit there. I mean, it, it, it looks pretty with the offense, but I really, truly, honestly think they just had no answers for Buffalo. I, I really don't. Now, that's why I'm I'm really also too am really keen on not having this goat talk. I, I don't I don't do that kind of con- those those kind of conversations because here was an here's an opportunity because the Chiefs have 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 some holes. You know, I, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting to hear the blueprint on how to beat the Chiefs. Has, has has that come into fruition? I mean, just I 
if 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 we hold one quarterback to a certain standard, why don't we do that for the other? I mean, they 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 just they're just not looking good right now, and and we're gonna get and I and I'll do a video this sometime this week of a preview because they we, they play the Washington football team next to Kansas City Chiefs, but because now. Um, Edward Hilaire is out. I know they're talking about looking at Marlon Mack. Return of the Mack. Okay. Um, but, man, uh, their, their defense, I think it starts with their defense. And I, I'm, I'm going to keep saying that because that's what stood out to me. Uh, now, Darius Fountain was cut. So I'm not really sure. Well, they signed Josh Gordon, so I'm pretty sure they're going to get him an opportunity um, to get some to get some to get, to get some starts out there. But I mean, I think the Chiefs they're still they're, they're a contender. Let me say that for the record, they still are. But just saying. Okay, the Washington Football Team versus the New Orleans Saints. Well, I saw positives in this game. Okay. Now I, I'm I'm just it's just my opinion. This is just what I took away. Okay. The score, yes, thirty three twenty. Okay. But they're worse, but I, I saw some things that I liked from Washington. Now, Tyler Heineke, yes, is had another up and down game, but I feel like he I Let me let me start off by saying this. Okay, let, me, let me back up. Defensively, we st- we're still struggling. Okay, the f- first play was a seventy-two yard touchdown. Landon Collins, st- I, I don't know what is going through the young man's head. Okay. The 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 Hail Mary look, it was a great throw by Jameis Winston and Callaway went up and got it. I just personally think it was a lack of communication. Okay. I, I've seen that happen numerous times on the on the Hail Mary play. Should that have happened? Hell no. But I think it was a good throw. And I get to give it to, and even Mark has got Callaway was a challenge and have to give it to him. And and that this again, I think it's just a lack of communication on defense. Okay. Now Tyler Heineke, give him time, okay? Yes, 20 of 41, two interceptions, I understand that. But I feel like he was, that's, that's just one of the reasons offensively we struggled. Now, We McLaurin was only targeted for 46 yards. Adam Humphreys had a couple catches. Marcus, I mean that Marcus Lattimore particularly. I mean, we couldn't we couldn't make we couldn't get open. We're not we couldn't get anything going offensively. I mean, in the running game, Antonio Ag Antonio Gibson. Had 60 yards. That was great. Off the offensive line, and I'm, I'm hoping Sam Cosme is okay because he, he got injured and he didn't come back. And he didn't, and, he's, and he probably will be out. He's going to be probably questionable for this game against Kansas City, but I'm hoping he'll play crossing fingers. Thoughts and prayers. Um, 
he did a really good job, particularly there's in, in the few situations with pass and running protection. He did a really good job with that to me. Um, the injuries right now for Washington, they hurt. They're hurting us. Let me pull up the injuries for the football team because I think if if some of these guys, I think, I, I, in my personal opinion, they do matter. Okay. Now, um, Brendan Sheriff is out. Cam Sims didn't play. Uh, Darren Payne was questioned. He had a, had a toe injury. Do, uh, Yami Brown didn't play. Cole Holcomb was questionable. Curtis Samuel was questionable. Um, just to me, key guys that Washington really could have used out there. And even though, you know, they, they, they were, I feel like we had some of those guys on that field Sunday. I think it would have made a little bit of a difference. Um, Chase Young had a sack, forced fumble. So, I mean, there I, I, again, like, we definitely defend. I see improvements. You know, Matt, Matt Leonidas did play. Payne played and Montez Sweat. They pressured that. They, they pressured famous Jameis. I can't. I can't take that away from that. It, it, the defensive line did it. Looked really good. It, it looked better in my opinion. But I still see it's a, it, it's improving. But it look it's getting better. Now. Cole Holcomb and and Jamin and Jamin Davis, particularly when it came to the run, I, I got to be better. Now, Holcomb did have an interception. I'll give him that. But again, I I, I feel like it. I feel like, ladies and gentlemen, I think it starts with coaching to a, to a certain extent. I really do. When I look at Jack Del Rio, right. It's it's some of uh, he's I, I you know he I I'm trying to find the right words, ladies and gentlemen. Jack DeRio play Washington's defense is a four three, okay. I've seen four two five. Five one five. I mean, I'm not sure if it's to help the to limit the, the linebackers getting exposed, but I, I mean, <laughs> I think there has to be. It starts with him. I, I really don't. I'll, I'll say, I, I mean, I, I will, I, it's, it's really hard for me to put it into words because the score does not reflect how we, we, we played better in this game. We really, truly did, ladies and gentlemen. It's just, we're now going into week five, okay? And With with, the, with with pain back and then laying nice, that the defense, the, I, I think it just, I think it starts with our secondary. I, I really do. I mean, when New Orleans took advantage of blown coverage, and you know, I appreciated what Matt Leona said about taking responsibility, and you know, defense had to stay up. I I, I appreciate that, but. It's a team game, you know. As a whole defense, we they got we got to look, we got to go back and film and see what we did wrong, because I, you know, I, I'm not I'm not walking back from my pick. I still guaranteed that the Washington football team was going to make the playoffs, and I still believe they can make the playoffs and win the division. 
I do believe that. But I think it's just we have to take it one game at a time. And listen, I understand this week five. There's still 12 more games to play. Um, but defensively, this is not what I expected. That's just my opinion. Don't get me wrong. I, on paper, the, the talent looks great. I don't know if it's the real system. I don't know what it is. But I I see improvements. I do. That's why I'm going to hold off on the guarantee until you see the NFL preview. I do. But um, AG had two touchdowns. Like I said, Adam Humphreys had three catches. Chase Young. The defense a lot looked better. And, again, you know, if we got to – I think it's just we could look at film and different things like that. I think Washington will get it together. I really do. So, um, I, 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 saw, I saw some I – saw, I really did see positives in the game. But we still have some work to do. We do. Okay. The <laughs> – this was a, a interesting Monday night football game. The the Baltimore Ravens versus the uh Baltimore Colts. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um yeah, the, 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 it was a it well, first of all, let me just say this. Um if you didn't watch this game and you as a Raven fan, you know, it's it's stressful. Really, as a Washington and Ravens fan, it can be stressful at times. But The first half, the, the the defense was lethargic. Baltimore secondary, I, I mean, no answers whatsoever for cost Carson Wentz. Anthony Everett, And I, and I give him kudos. He has stepped up in this in the absence of Marcus Peters being out. But he was targeted 12 times and allowed 190 yards. Marlon Humphrey was their best was it was was the best performer. That was it. Now the Indianapolis Colts came in there with a chip on their shoulder because on paper we sat there and said, oh, the Colts, you know. They're, they're not that team, you know, in the, in the, in the AFC South um, with Tennessee and, you know, they came in there and they, they and they changed and they changed narratives. They, they truly did. Uh, I'm not taking anything away from the Indianapolis Colts. And I'll get back in the Baltimore in a minute. Carlson Wentz had a 402 yards. And the last quarter to do that was Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning. I want and John, Johnny United is in that, in that in that category too. Now the first play of the game, um, present though the first score of the game was on the Jonathan Taylor screen, and you know I. I with you. Oh my God! So, you know he and also too on the on running the ball. I mean he had 169 yards. And, you know, Michael Pittman Jr., who I think is who is a great wide receiver, I think he's their number one wide receiver, um, was definitely Crosswind's main target. You know, Indianapolis offensive line really gave Crosswind's protection. Uh, you know, the only thing I can take away from you know, the loss for Indianapolis was, you know, their corners. I think it was Isaiah Rodgers got targeted the most. Now, if as a Raven fan, because I have to you know, I have to go out there and look what I see. As a Raven fan, the first half, okay, it's it's 22 to 3 going into the half. And you know, 
the Indianapolis Colts defensively had answers for our running game. Relationship with your oh children. my God. Only 24 yards as a cohesive unit. Lamar Jackson was the only one who could find who found success in the running game. Now, I'm, unfortunately, at four, I'm I'm a little I'm I'm sad to know that that record was snapped. But in the midst of trying to come back and win that game, bullshit. I. The first, I, I, I knew the game wasn't, to me, most teams would have packed it in. But the Indianapolis Colts came in and said, okay, we're, we're, we're going to take away the run game away from you. The way you're going to beat us is we want to see, can you throw the football? Mark Andrews, Marquise Brown, Marquise Hollywood Brown. This is what I'm looking for. From these guys. This is what I'm looking for. Mark, Mark Andrews, 147 yards and two touchdowns. Also, I'm going to give my thoughts and prayers to his to him and his family. I know his grandmother passed away. I know he, from playing with a heavy heart. Good game. Thoughts and prayers. Hope you're doing well. Hope the family's doing well. Mark, he's Hollywood Brown. This is what we drafted you fifth overall. You, you, we, we see you as Lamar's number one wide receiver. 125 yards and two touchdowns. Now, he torched their, their, their backfield. Particularly on the one play where he it became, it was now 22-9, where, he, where Lamar threw that touchdown, torched him. Now, our offensive line still not – Still need it, it's just going to take it one game at a time. We, we 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 struggled at times to really help Lamar create some running lanes, not just Lamar, but Latavius Murray, Freeman, and Tyshawn Williams. We really struggled. We struggled. We struggled last night. Now, I feel like again Indianapolis again. When you got Buckner and Darius Leonard and those boys. They 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 put a stop to the run game. Now, I, I will say this: uh, pass protection wise, still need some cleaning up. Still need some cleaning up. Now, if you told me the Baltimore Ravens were going to come back and win this game, I'm not going to sit here and act like I didn't know this was coming. Why act like I know this was coming? Because I did it. Um, you would have smacked me in the face. Because defensively, I'm starting. I'm going back to the defense. So I'm going back to the defense. The first half, and the, the defense line in the first half was was poor, and the second half did its job. They limited Indianapolis's rushing and passing attack. Odafi Owa, I'm telling you, this boy can ball. This is a potential rookie of the year. Calais Campbell had two two sacks and he blocked the field goal. I knew the game was over when Calais Campbell blocked that field goal and and Rodrigo blatant shot. I think he said his last name. He missed that field goal because you look at if you look, Lamar's lips said it's over. Now the linebackers. Okay, this is why this is again. I'm going to give Patrick Queen a pass because it's it's his second year. You know, he's still at times is struggling how to tackle, and I, I think if you give him time, he will develop. Now, there are some things defensively Baltimore has to clean up. It was an ugly win. Do not get me wrong, but I'm not going to take away. What Lamar Jackson did, I'm not going to take that away. I'm not, not excuse me. What the Baltimore Ravens did, offensively did. Down 16, 
three consecutive touchdown drives, 37 of 43 passes. That's 84%. If I'm doing the math right. Let me just make sure I have the math right. Eighty-six percent. Okay. Four touchdowns, and just for the record, if he doesn't fumble that one possession, the scores board says something says it says otherwise. Now, because I, I I'm gonna play a clip, and and again, I have to use my secret weapon because. Well, and, and I have said it religiously, but but people say, hey, Nathan, there are no narratives on Lamar Jackson. You know, we just hold him to a high standard. That's fine. But if you're going to hold him to a standard, be consistent with your argument. Don't switch up because now they're saying in, on, in, in today, well, can Lamar, can the Ravens win the Super Bowl? We're in week five and you're asking, can they win the Super Bowl? And so they're saying, well, what did you think of Lamar Jackson's performance last night? So I'm going to play the clip. And, and I want you to understand, and this was going into the, in the game before. Okay. This is my issue. I'm trying to get people to understand that what's around Lamar Jackson. I want you to understand. I'm not taking a shot at these guys, but I want you to understand what I have been trying to tell people about Lamar Jackson. Just to stay with me. I'm going to use real quick shout out to the rec, shout out to regular Ravens fan. I'm using this clip to 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 help make my point, as they like to say, right? Well, here's another part of the context that's not included in the stats that they show to the national audience. So I'm going to pull another video from another conversation. And you can already see on the screen where I'm going with it. But this goes to that context. So here we go. Sean Bateman returning to practice this week. His presence could be huge. Also, Miles Boykin back. This season, Baltimore's wide receivers have an 11.8% drop rate. That's the worst rate by any wide receiver group in the NFL. In fact, it's 3% worse than the next closest unit. Some of that has to do with what Hollywood Brown, unfortunately, did last week. But, Keith, how important is it to get a piece like Rashad Bateman back for Lamar in this offense? Bateman, for those who may not remember, is a do-it-all receiver and really does bring a lot to this offense, potentially. <laughs> I want to stop it right there, right? Because I just wanted to show you all, I wanted them to tell you all that stat, okay? An 11.8% drop rate, the highest among any group of wide receivers in the NFL right Okay, so I just wanted to play that in a little bit of regular, regular, regular Raven face. Shout out to him. This is what I've been looking for. You see, we keep ignoring what's around Lamar Jackson. And just squarely putting blame and saying, Lamar Jackson's got to do this. Lamar Jackson's got to do that. Instead of looking at the context, what about I need Hollywood Brown to step up? I need Mark Andrews to step up. I need to see the offense consistently, not just Lamar Jackson, consistently show me big games. They should have blown up the Detroit Lions last Sunday. No excuse. There's no excuse why my, my number one wide receiver had – Two die pieces and drops, 11.4%. I tried to bring this up lad, a couple years ago after we lost the Tennessee Titans. What did people say? There's no narrative on Lamar Jackson. You know, they hold we hold him to a high standard. Somebody said, well, the yards he threw was meaningless. They were empty calories. So wait a minute. You come out here and you're saying, well, that – Lamar Jackson is great. Lamar Jackson is this. But yet you refuse to look around. If you refuse to look around what's around him. So you mean tell me that a Willie Sneed, a, a, um, he had Michael Crabtree, Mark Andrews. You mean to tell me that their positions don't matter? You mean to tell me that Lamar Jackson is just a square, sorely put the team on his back? Look at Derrick Henry for a great, great example. Derrick Henry, as great as he is, 
The Tennessee Titans are this, aren't the same team. Why? Because they they they're way, they they just they're not the same team. When you look at that Tennessee Titan game, was it Derrick Henry running over the Ravens defense and making them look like they're going to look make it and that game look like trash? Or are you going to or you want or you going to look at the fact and say, well, you know what? That that damn Raven team, you know what? On paper, you know what? The bye week, maybe we shouldn't have a bye week. Apologize, it's a mosquito, whatever the hell it is. Um, different things, uh, you know. What, what what's the excuse? Instead of just saying, "Wow, you know what? Whew, he had over five hundred. He had he had over five hundred yards." I can't, I can't, I can't put that blame on just on Lamar Jackson. I gotta look at the team collectively. But I get it. I understand it. I get it. We all hold Lamar Jackson to a certain standard, and I respect it. But look what they've done. They done. They 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 found ways to say, "Can Lamar Jackson win a Super Bowl? Can the Ravens win?" They were only in Week Five. Now let me play the video of where this came from, and I know what the, what people are going to say. You got to understand, Nathan. That's what they like to do. But I just want to play it and hear what y'all need to hear for yourselves. Far can Lamar carry the Super Bowl? I ain't even gonna let you finish. Okay. He can take him to the Super Bowl, Molly. Okay. He really truly can. That defense continues to get better. That's just for the record, I appreciate what Keyshawn Johnson's doing. He's standing up for us. I really do respect it. Um it's just I'm playing the clip. I can be sure shores up. Uh and when you talk about just who he is. Mm -hmm as a dynamic playmaker, and his ability to strike fear into the defensive unit, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. They didn't want him to get the ball at overtime. That, that, oh, that. Oh, that. <laughs> uh -uh. Especially after he was cooking the way he was cooking. Yeah. If you think about it, and you go back, I think it was the Indianapolis Colts game where they were sitting out there, Hollywood Brown was dropping Dropping uh Detroit. two balls left through not Detroit. the coach game, it was, yeah, what game was it? The Eagles? The Eagle game, maybe Detroit. dropping Detroit. Detroit. Detroit game, dropping three he dropped three touchdowns. Yeah. So you start adding statistics and all that up. Then when you look at his ability to make plays I, when he gets into trouble with his feet, and now he's starting to keep his eyes and head downfield and not thinking about running first. I think a lot of people think that he's just a run first quarterback. When he's in the pocket, he's a pocket passer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look traditional. Mm -hmm. So to most people that watch football, they look at it and think it's Friday Night Lights mm -hmm. because he's so dynamic. And then people want to say, well, you know, he's running too much. He's going to get hurt. His body is slight. He's been doing this since he was in Pop One. Nothing going to happen to him. He knows how to protect himself. And that's the beauty of it. And he's just, man, I just, I love it. He can take them all the way to suit. He already beat the Chiefs. Right. Okay? Yep. So he got that out the way. That's off his back. He didn't already beat uh, Cleveland before. That's over with. Only team that's standing his way in the AFC, in my opinion, is Buffalo. Buffalo. I would, I, would, I wouldn't go as far as to say he would. He never. He does. He knows how to protect himself because I've seen him put himself in dangerous situations. No dangerous I'm situations, as far as your eyes say, just because it looked a certain way. But he knows how to protect himself. Okay, when that brother's stretching near the goal line the way that he did, I mean, listen, he he could have got been by. stretching that's that cool. way forever. That's cool. I'm just saying, it only takes one. You know that. Oh, come on, you know man. That. I mean, we no, okay. So here's what I'm gonna ask you. So here's what I'm asking. Right, right, go ahead. Do quarterbacks like that with that style in the plays that you see? Is there anyone that style? No, hold on. I'm talking, one about, I'm talking about dudes that's running around. Okay. The Russell Wilsons, okay. the Kyler Murray, right. the Cam News. When they're diving and doing those things, are they getting hurt? No, no, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. The people no, that's getting hurt is them Carson Wentz's and them type of dudes. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's all I'm saying. Here's where I'm at with Lamar Jackson. I got to see it. To Other than they got to pay him his money. And too. Then, oh no. I'm, I'm pretty, listen, you gave Josh Allen $258 million. You better give Lamar Jackson at least $250 million. Out. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm cool with the $258. Watching he get paid less than Josh Allen as far as I'm concerned. I'm down with that. He deserves every penny, okay, because the brother's box office. And he's winning football games. Really? He ain't just winning football games. He's box office, too. Oh, really quick. Now, there, there, there was there, there was a, as a, the season as the season started, 
okay, there was this um, question of who was under the most pressure. And believe it or not, number eight was on people's list. La ladies and gentlemen, Lamar Jackson is under no pressure. The only pressure that he's under is signing on that dotted line. Because remember, he's doing this without an agent. They're just waiting to see, well, how much money is he going to get paid? Why are the Ravens not paying him now? It'll come, ladies and gentlemen. Just wait. Just wait. Okay. So actually, you can make an argument. He deserves more money so what problem than Josh do, Allen. So what problem do you What have? I'm saying to you is this. The two games prior to last night, okay. all right, when he played against Detroit and Denver, both wins. Okay. In fairness to him, yes. he didn't even complete 60% of his passes. That's what I pay attention to come postseason time. That's what I pay attention to. Stephen A., they out there dropping Bentley. Question. That's why I want to stop it right there. See, come postseason, ladies and gentlemen, it's week five of the NFL. And we're bringing up postseason. May I remind you, because since, because, you know, again, I, I'm also one of those, now I'm not a stat guy, but because he keeps seeming to bring up stats, you have to throw 60. So now the requirement of Lamar Jackson to be an elite quarterback, because according to Stephen A and others, he's not an elite quarterback. He has to go 60% plus of his passes. He has to consistently beat teams throwing the football. Okay. So, this is Lamar Jackson's playoff stats. Now, because I, I had to pull these out. Now, obviously, the game against – the first game was a, was a wild card, again, was against San Diego, against the town of Los Angeles Rams. And the, the thing was, oh, the blueprint. They figured out Lamar Jackson. Next year, they won a division. He was unanimous MVP. Right there, highlight in yellow. He threw 15, 31 of 59 passes. But he threw for over 300 yards. He threw a touchdown, but threw two picks. Ladies and gentlemen, the 59 attempts, what does that, what, what that, what, what that, what that start from? Guys dropping passes. You see, you can sit there and say, well, it's all, you know, it's all about Lamar Jackson. But last time I checked, wide receivers get paid, tight ends get paid, and running backs get paid. Because if if my quarterback has thrown has thrown 59 passes, only completed 52 and a half percent, that tells me that either my wide receivers are not hitting their strides or they're dropping passes. I showed you the statistic where this season, going into this game last night, they have the highest dropping rates of this season, 11%. What does that say? So when we're saying, because now can Lamar lead the Rams to the Super Bowl? Yes, but with help. Now, this past season, as he killed this narrative, he has to win a playoff game. Now, he took a team down 10 nothing, and the two games that he played, he threw for 64%. So he can run that up to 65%, 341 yards in combined games. Now, that Buffalo game, if you take away the fact that just, you know, you got to also take in consideration that Justin Tucker missed two field goals, okay, and – it was just a bad. It was, it was just a bad game to play. Bad weather to play in. I mean, when you play in that kind of weather, it's not easy to throw the ball. Offensively, you know, you had six bad snaps. It's not excuses. It's facts. Josh Allen, and who said at the time, who said anyone can throw the ball? Lamar Jackson was fourteen of twenty-two. Josh Allen, I think, threw the ball like seven more times, inaccurately. So you're saying he has to do it come playoff time. So let me ask you a question. What about the others? Because Mark Andrews just got a nice contract. Sammy Watkins, Hollywood Brown, they're getting checks too. 
That matters. That's what you're talking I, I about. Saw, I saw Hollywood Brown drop some passes, no doubt about it. And so they you dropped, add they, them as catchers, the percentage hold, 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 gonna go hold, hold, up. They didn't drop passes last night. He was balling, and I get all of that. All I'm trying to say to you is this. We have seen the Baltimore Ravens throughout the years. We've seen them show up in the regular season. We've seen them, and then something happens in the postseason. I'm just saying. All I'm saying is when we talk about Lamar Jackson, I'm thinking the Josh dude Allen, is in his fourth year. He's I'm taking out. him to the playoffs I'm every out. year. You act like I'm calling the brothers. No, because you just said you've seen the Baltimore Ravens in the past. All I'm saying, right. this is only his fourth year. I'm telling you, when we talk about Lamar Jackson, okay. my litmus test, okay. because he looked he looked like a pocket pass, even though he ran the ball 14 times last day, he looked like a pocket passer to me when he was in the pocket. He looked very <clears> composed. <throat> he was patient. There was a few times he could have taken off and ran, and he did it. He stayed. He was patient. He waited for receivers to get over. Connected with Mark Andrews 11 times. Connected with Hollywood Brown yeah. nine times. Yeah. The brother put on the show, no doubt about it, even though Carson And they number one pick ain't even out there. That's Sean right. Bateman, where is he? Exactly. So all I'm saying to you is that, okay. again, with greatness comes great expectations. And I'm looking at him and I'm saying, yo, Lamar, good. I love what I'm seeing. Okay. Because come playoff time, okay. we go see, we go, you go see Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes. I ain't worried about it. Listen, Baker, and by the way, yeah, listen, yeah. listen. And by the way, Baker Mayfield liking one of the tweets when I said they ain't winning no damn Super Bowl with, with Baker Mayfield as a quarterback. Damn it, I meant it. I didn't stutter, but <laughs> that Kareem Hunt that'll put me wrong okay. with Lamar. Yes. I want to see what I saw last night. Okay. Throwing the football. I ain't talking about running because we know what he can do. Throwing the football. What I saw last night, I want to see that come play. Have time. you ever seen any young quarterbacks do what, you, what he's done no. in the first three years of their career? No. I ain't even going to count this no. year. No. This the first three years. No. No. So he's, he's a growing. superstar. He's now, a superstar. Now, remember, he's remember, a superstar. Remember, what he, remember, remember what he said, people. He wants to see Lamar Jackson do this come playoff time. How come in that same sentence you didn't see come playoff time, the others around Lamar have to step up? No. Just in the just first saying. three years of their career, no. I ain't even gonna count this no. year. No. Just the first three years. No, no. So he's, he's a growing. superstar. He's a superstar. He's growing. He's a superstar. He completed eighty-five percent of Come his on, Mom. passes. Talk to, talk to this dude, man. Four TDs. Zero. Talk that, to him. These are things that have never happened talk in NFL him. history. Unprecedented. Please. May I ask a question? Sure. My comment that he didn't complete sixty percent of his passes in the two the previous games was I false about that? Yes or no? No, but but don't, there's don't context, say what? but there's context. Well, I'm to just that. saying. But come on, man. If if Molly ain't teeing you up right and the producers ain't helping us up right, this show ain't gonna be tops on the air. That's true. But okay, I'm, think I'm, about I, it. I understand that. Think I understand about it. That. I understand. So that. if they out there dropping, like I said, they out there dropping Bentleys right. and Lamborghini trucks and all that sort of stuff, and instead of holding on to the damn ball like they did last night. Okay. I okay. had the same conversation okay. with okay. Swaggo and Dan Orlowski. Mm -hmm. They kept saying he needs help. He needs help. Yeah, they got to catch the ball. Yes. He's putting it in the bread basket. Yeah, yeah, but you act like that. If was Justin Herbert was doing the Tom, same thing. You act like that was applicable the last three years he was. Yes, it is because context matters. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my point. Context, all context always matters. Like, we, like, like, like that's like saying, okay, if I just say, well, Lamar Jackson threw for 300 yards, but had four interceptions. He threw for 200 yards. Let I me mean, think about it. If he threw for less than 100 yards, that means in, in, in Marquise Brown, Sammy Watkins, Mark Andrews dropped a combined 15 passes while Lamar Jackson can't throw for 100 yards. The context. Why was that? Well, wide receivers were dropping the ball. That matters. Come on, people. It's not rocket science. It's in the postseason. You won a playoff game last year. You act like that's applicable. He's growing. I understand. We know that. We said, listen. And Molly's I'm question, stop, can I'm they win stop, the Super Bowl and I with say, him? And, and I, I said, yes. I, and I said, I got to see it to believe oh, it. Man, All right. On, now, now, don't give me no come on. Now, here's the you other thing. You don't trust him in the come clutch. Come you don't trust him Here's the other thing I want to get on Keyshawn about. He just came back off night from 19 last night. He's ignoring Here's I'm not ignoring him. Here's my point that I want to get on Keyshawn about. I would never ignore you, Molly. Here's the deal, Keisha. I have a right to look at the competition, too. All I'm saying to you, ain't y'all act like I'm sitting here saying the brother ain't a superstar. He's a superstar. See, like, that, that, that bothers me. So, in other words, so pretty much, that shows me that a guy like Stephen A. Smith doesn't know football. I, you know, I didn't give a shot to Keyshawn Johnson for, for, for really... 
killing these narratives because I, I just don't understand what it's what it's going to take for people to understand. Like, yo, if we really give this guy some help, we can see the greatness of Lamar Jackson. What you saw this young was the greatness and what this kid can do. I trust my eyes, quoting the regular Ravens fan. I know what I saw last night. Last night, I saw a guy who didn't let, especially those plays, okay, didn't let none of the mistakes get to his head. Okay, we're going to go back out there and do it again. That's a, that, that, that is a leader of men. And last night, they showed heart, determination, and they did not give up. Most teams were throwing the talent. I, I, I just feel like, it, you know, it, 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 it's, it's getting, I'm getting tired of this, this, this slander on Lamar Jackson. I, I really get, I really am getting annoyed of it. I understand Lamar Jackson has to do better in the Super Bowl, but it has to be the other stepping up around Lamar Jackson. That's it. There should be no, but no, 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 no. Lamar Jackson, the media all says Lamar Jackson. BS. It's the team around him. If the team steps up around him and plays better, it would be better. You'd see what you saw last night. This is what we should be seeing for the Bunner Ravens. Offensively and collectively. So in other words, Stephen A. Smith, once again, will always find guys like Stephen A. Smith, this would bother you because it will always find ways to move the goalposts on Lamar Jackson. It, it, it's really... Oh, yo, I, I, I can't because my, my head's starting to hurt. And you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm really not. I'm just going to play another clip to, to really, really drive the point home because uh, enough's enough. My guy, my quarterback, Lamar Jackson, the one who can't throw, the one who can't come back when his team is losing, the one who can't throw when his team is down and they can't run the ball, you know, he's got to fling that football, you know, he's got to be accurate. Remember how they talk about this? It's not accurate. He's, he's not a thrower of the football. Well, Lamar Jackson on Monday Night Football with his team down big in the fourth quarter, 16 points led his team to a comeback victory. Lamar Jackson, the quarterback who can't throw, the one who needs to get better as a passer, you know, threw for 442 yards, 400 yards in regulation, by the way, people. I don't want a lot of people to think that he got most of his yards in overtime. 400 yards in regulation, over 400 in regulation, total of 442 yards. Lamar Jackson was 31 of 37 throwing the football. Now, anybody who watched the game, right? If you watched the game, you notice you heard announcers talking about his accuracy. And it's not accurate. He was 31 of 37. Lamar Jackson completed 86% of his passes tonight. The highest completion percentage in NFL history of any quarterback to ever throw for 400 yards. I'm going to say that again. The quarterback who can't throw, right? The one who's a running back playing quarterback had the highest completion percentage of any quarterback in NFL history to have thrown for 400 yards in a game. 31 of 37 for 442. He only threw one bomb. There was only one. Everything else was him being efficient with the football. They said he can't read defenses. They said he can't go through his progressions. Did we see how many times Lamar Jackson stayed in the pocket? They said, oh, he likes to run. He's one read and run. Lamar Jackson sat in the pocket, people. Sat in the pocket, went through his progressions, found the open man, sometimes checking it down to his running back. 
He played the position the way you're supposed to play it. So I hope that finally we've put it to bed. I hope that the haters have finally seen that as much as you talk about this young man, he's going to destroy you and make you eat your words. I hope that those people who said that this is the year they're going to figure him out, maybe they have figured out that they had the wrong quarterback because there's another quarterback that's being figured out and it's not number eight in Baltimore. He's figuring them out. And there's another thing. Before anybody comes at me and wants to talk to me about injuries that the Colts had, the Ravens lost their number one, number two, and number three running back. The Ravens lost arguably their top one, maybe one or two cornerback. The Ravens were without their starting safety. The Ravens have the worst linebacking core as far as middle linebackers in the NFL. The defense of the Ravens is not great this year. We all know that. But they came up big when they had to. Shout out to Calais Campbell with a huge, huge field goal block and then a missed field goal. And then that culminates in Lamar Jackson doing what he does. Magic. People recognize that this young man is a pretty darn good quarterback. Yes, all quarterbacks are going to make mistakes. Lamar Jackson fumbled in this game and lost the fumble. Carson Wentz fumbled. That's a wash. By the way, I forgot to say that Lamar Jackson had four touchdown passes Sorry about that, ladies and, gentlemen. and two two-point conversions. But four touchdown passes, mm, 400 yards, 442 yards, four touchdown passes, 31 to 37, but he can't throw. I just wanted to get that out there. This is just a reaction video to Monday Night Football. I haven't really broken it all down yet, people, but I had to get this one out there. I don't know what else I can need, I need to say. I really don't. And I, and and as a, as a as a Raven fan, as a Washington, especially as a Raven fan, I'm going to do my part as well to kill to kill these narratives on Lamar Jackson. It's time to give the man his flowers. That man played his ass off, and he's doing it with a with a team that has injuries. I just don't know what else to say. Demar, there needs to be some respect on the man's name, plain and simple. Now, oh, I don't know about that. Sorry. We're going to recap week six. It was a great win. Um, we're still home. We play the San Diego Chargers, who um, – Shut out the Cleveland Browns. Congratulations! Oh, 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 oh my God. So that was one of my guarantees I got wrong, I, and I should not have done that. And the Colts, they will face the Texans, who they will beat. Guarantee! All right. Now. <sighs> Week six was actually a pretty interesting week for me. Um, one, because I got my – I won in fantasy football again, so I'm on a two-game win streak. However, this was a pretty interesting week when I'm, in terms of – you know, particularly with the Bengals and, and the and the Packers, where there were five missed field goals. With your oh children. my God! I I, I expected a, a, a blowout, and again, I'm not sleeping on. The, I actually, I can't take anything away from the Bengals. They they are an up and coming young team. The the Joe Burrow Jamar Chase connection is 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 real. Ladies and gentlemen, now the San Diego. So excuse me, I don't know. I keep saying San Diego because, ladies and gentlemen, I remember them when they were the San Diego Chargers. I'm sorry, the Los Angeles Chargers had a shootout with the Cleveland Browns. Now, here's a fun fact: the Cleveland Browns scored 42 points, had 532 yards, and did not throw and did not commit a turnover. They're the first NFL team, <clears throat> including the playoffs, to lose 40, either 40 points, no turnovers, or 40 points, 500 yards, and zero turnovers. 
That was interesting. Now, um, I don't remember if I, I think I said that the Oakland Raiders were going to beat the um, Oakland, sorry. I think the Las Vegas Raiders were going to beat Chicago. And Nick Rosario actually got it right. He got that guarantee right that the uh, Raiders beat the the Bears beat the Bills. Excuse me. No, Bills. No, the Bears beat the Raiders. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a long day. I'm tired. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, the Cowboys. Oh my gosh. They shellacked the New York Giants. The Giants got dubbed on the road. Um, I actually have to give the Dallas Cowboys the respect in this instance. They look like a legitimate. They look like a legitimate contender in the NFC. When you look at their schedule, though, ladies and gentlemen, it's pretty soft. I did guarantee the Saint Arizona Cardinals. I don't. I want to say the Saint Louis Cardinals. I don't know the Arizona Cardinals. They beat the 49ers. Uh, I was a little surprised with the scoring. Um, they're the first team. They're, they're, the last team they went five and zero was in nineteen seventy four, which is actually is pretty good. Uh, Trey Lance. Still young, it was just really his first test. And, you know, again, again, that same thing about, like I said, with Justin Fields, it's all about development. It's part of his, his how to recover recovery from this game. I mean, mental, physical recovery, development from the, how you develop, ment- how you recover from this game is going to be part of his development, is what I'm trying to say. I apologize. Excuse me. What else happened? I already talked about the Washington fo- football team versus the Saints. I got a guarantee. I said the Philadelphia Eagles. Were, I said the Panthers are going to beat the Eagles, and the Eagles won 21-18. Um, man. I You know, I hate to say it, but Cam Newton, he, he needs a job. I, I ain't going to lie. He needs to be out here starting. He needs, he needs, he needs to be on the NFL team. Um, I got another. I got another. I had got another guarantee wrong. The Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Denver Broncos 27-19. Juju Smith-Schuster is out for the rest of the season due to shoulder, which will have to get surgery on at some later. At hopefully soon. The Buccaneers. I already told you that he was going to. They were going to demolish Miami. You know, again, he threw for four hundred yards, had five touchdowns. Um, and with an injured thumb, the the um, the Lions man. Relationship with you. Oh my God, Dan! You know what? I have to give Dan Campbell the respect in this regard. I like the fact that you know he was emotional after the game. You know, and the Lions just find themselves in just some bad luck. Um, they're doing all the right things, and 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 they're playing hard. I mean, they they're playing with tenacity. They're doing all the things. It just, they, 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 you know, they just are this. The end. They just. The, it just. It's just a lot of just. I don't know. Um, they're zero and five, and you know they're going to get their first win. Uh, I kind of. I do. I do the week. I do the week six predictions. I'll get to that, but. Um, Say what you want. I mean, they 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 have heart, and they're determined, and they just from the beginning of the game to end of the game, uh, it just sucks the way that the game had because they want they want the Vikings went on the on the field goal by Greg Joseph, so <sighs> already guaranteed the Tennessee Titans would win against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, Patriots beat the Texans. I thought I would expect to see a a. Uh, Blowout final score is actually 25 22. Uh, really quick, uh, the final score for the Jacksonville Jaguars was the Titans 37, Titans, Jaguars 19. Um, the Patriots and Texans, the last time we saw two rookies 
that through three touchdown passes against New England since Bill Belichick was a head coach, David Mills and Russell Wilson. So interesting company he's a part of now. Uh, the New York Jets, those J, those J E T S Jets, Jets, Jets. They went and the Falcons also went into the beautiful city of London, England. Um, can I just say this really honestly too? Uh, the first half of that game, zero points, no passing yards, 63 total yards as a cohesive unit, only five first downs. With oh, children. my God. I'm not going to even sit here and act like I didn't know this was coming. Or act like I know this was coming because I did it. You know, and, and, and to make matters worse, the Yang Green, I looked this up, they're being outscored a combined 75 to 13. Um, my Lord. Uh, that was week six. It was a great, interesting week. Um, the one thing I'm really kind of getting concerned is the injuries, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting really concerned with the injuries. A lot of key players, personnel are getting hurt. I don't want to see that because especially, you know, we're now 17 games. Um, I, I just – we got to figure out how to keep these guys healthy. We really do. So next topic. Now, before I start, I want to preference my comments. Now, in the last video, you know, I didn't really have all the, all the information and – you know, let me take this opportunity to want to say this. I think it's very important to have all the facts before you say an opinion. When I made those comments, I didn't like the fact that, you know, what he said in the email was wrong. You know, why are we bringing this up a decade later? I didn't like that. But with more of this coming out, now it's it's it looks bad from the standpoint of my 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 my, my biggest my biggest question. Let, let, let me just John Gruden yesterday stepped down as the head coach because now more emails came out with him making homophobic misogynist comments and also to making some comments that were deemed racist towards one Demarius Smith. Now, in, the, I, in that same video, I talked with Demarius Smith. I came to Demarius, the, the, Demarius Smith's defense and what he has done with the Players Association. He's done a lot for the league for these players. Now, this was what he said. I have resigned as head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders, he said in a, in a statement issued by the team. I love the Raiders and do not want to be a distraction. Thank you to all the players, coaches, and staff and fans of Raider Nation. I'm sorry. I never meant to hurt anyone. Now, from what I'm understanding in the email, the emails talked about, he, you know, again, misogynist homophobic language he didn't like the fact that there was an emergence of in the in the emails of women becoming referees at the time michael sam who was um, openly gay he didn't like that and he didn't appreciate players at the time protesting during the national anthem now these emails were sent to the former GM of the Washington football team, Bruce Allen, the same guy who said, you know, the culture is actually pretty damn good. And, you know, at the time when he wrote those emails, he was working for ESPN. Now, I, he also said that the league should not have made pressure Jeff Fisher um, to pressure and drafting Michael Sam. Jeff Fisher came out, and I, and I appreciate he came out on saying that he was not pressured drafting Michael Sam because Michael, Michael Sam was drafted in 2014. 
Now, also that was included in the email, he criticized Roger Cordell. Um, for trying to reduce injuries. Eric Lee, Eric Reed should have been removed from the from the NFL. Um, he's used some language to describe some coaches and journalists, pretty much disrespecting owners, coaches using to just disrespect. Okay. Now. I don't condone any of those things because you have to understand that and this is where, but then this is also to my my issue because I, I don't understand. See, see, this this is what bothers me. And this says more about and Gruden isn't the wrong. Don't get me wrong; he definitely isn't the wrong of this. But let me ask you a question: You have thirty to NFL owners. Why are we not calling them out and saying, hey, wait a minute. These emails where you were, you had to be aware of these emails well over that period of time. Now, these emails came out, ladies and gentlemen, just give you some context because Daniel Snyder, um, what happened, what was going on with because there's been some issues with the Washington football team and different things like that. So that's where these emails came from. They came from a, 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 a basically as evidence in last June. Now, I, I want to play a couple clips and I want you to hear. One, I want you to hear what Keyshawn Johnson has to say, because, you know, at first I, I'm, I'm like, OK. Because whether you like this or not, John Gruden will not get into the job in the NFL. He will not. But I, I, I respect Keyshawn Johnson. He's one of my favorite football players growing up. Um, and you have to understand this guy played for him. He played, John Gruden was his coach when Tampa Bay. Now, I understand at, at times, John Keyshawn can be a hothead. I, I, New York, I, but on the field, Keyshawn could ball. Let me just play the clip. John Gruden resigning as head coach of the Raiders in the wake of his racist, misogynistic, and anti-gay emails being exposed during an investigation of the Washington football team. Rich Basaccia now takes over as the Raiders' interim head coach. Keyshawn, I'll start with you. You played under him for two years. You won a Super Bowl together. Your final thoughts here. Well, it was a, it is obviously it's a sad situation to a, a coach's career in what John Gruden tried to do. He won a Super Bowl with us, like you said, Molly. He tried to reinvent the, the Oakland Raiders to the Las Vegas Raiders. He didn't get a chance to see it through because of these emails. And in the end of the day, the Raiders got it right. I mean, they, they, they got it right. And, you know, he's got a lot of soul searching to do. He's got to, he's got to sit there and think about some of the things that he's done, not only to hurt his family, but also hurt a whole bunch of people like Stephen A. said earlier, blacks, the LBGTQ community, mm -hmm. uh, women who want to be referees. So on, on, and on. The commissioner, you got a lot of thinking to do, buddy. It's the bottom line. His career is over, as far as I'm concerned. Um, there's no way around it. Um, I certainly, again, didn't know about all of these emails. All of us didn't, you know. I'm gonna stop it right there. Um, I just wanted to get show you guys Keyshawn John Johnson's. Um, so I just wanted to show another clip because we, you have to understand, and, and again, this is the whole point. And this is something my parents always taught me. They always taught me growing up. Because, you know, you have to understand, at some point, John Gruden, you would have had to know this was going to come back to bite you in the ass. Now, I'm, let's just call it what it is. Because remember, everybody today, you say something on social media, 
that's deemed inappropriate, like again, misogynist, homophobic, that makes your image look bad. You would think a guy like John Gruden, because again, when the when I, I just like everybody else, when those first emails, when the first email came out, like, oh, okay, like come on. But as we heard more, like, wow, this guy did not hold back. But my biggest question is where are the NFL owners? Because to me, what you're saying as owners that you are okay with letting this guy coach an NFL team and having these thoughts. When you have a guy like Carl's Nesbitt in your locker room, who, by the way, came out as an openly gay NFL player, which I respect. How do you think he looks at John Gruden after this? Because, again, we can all learn and grow from our mistakes. We can all learn and grow as humans. But you, you, you can't say these things and act like it's no big deal or just sweep it under the rug. Now, I don't know if there is malice intent, because I feel like with the Washington football team, we're going to get to them in a little bit, because I feel like this is a let's please get some of this pressure off us, because the Washington football team has already got enough shit with it as as already is. But if you've had players, Tim Brown has spoken out about them, um, Warren Sapp wrote a book, kind of giving, kind defending him, but that's in the hand right there. But Keyshawn, the guys that play for him, if they're saying these things, you take that and you say, okay, we'll take, we, we, we understand what you're saying. But let me, let, again, let me play the clip, another clip of Keyshawn. There's another clip, but that's a kind of, I just want to play his reaction. Oops. Let me do this, but I apologize. I didn't You know how assistant coaches are. Assistant coaches have to feed their family, so they're not going to say nothing. Right. But they'll tell you on the side. That's right. Hey, dude, this dude here is a bad guy. And I always try to tell person, man, that dude's a bad guy. Y'all don't seem to get it. Because he gets on television and he has the scrawl on his face and everybody likes him because he won a championship. I take no personal feelings with me at all about John Gruden. The guy actually tried to get me to come back to play for him the first year I retired. Bruce Allen and him called me and my agent to try to get me to come back and play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to make another playoff run, and I decided to stay at ESPN instead. But I also understood who he was. Am I surprised that this sort of behavior would come out about Coach Gruden? I'm not surprised that he would talk about people in despairing views behind their backs. Not at all. Am I surprised that he used racial insensitive things? Did, am I surprised that he was uh, acting uh, homophobic situations, talking about the LBGT community? Am I surprised that he went after the vice president, went after the commissioner? No, I'm not surprised. But what I'm surprised about is some of the words that he used because I never saw that side of him, Molly. Yeah. I, ne- I can't sit here and tell you that he, uh, that he called somebody out their name. or he, I never saw that. But as far it as like to your face, it, it was always positive. It was that a was positive kind of a short, thing yeah. because I kept it positive, but I also saw through the stuff that he was putting out there. Mm. And it and it it's always been that way. It's a funny story. <laughs> You'll laugh at this though too, Stephen. Eh? Prior to him taking this is how this is why I say a fraud and phony. Prior to him taking a job with ESPN, it was report. I mean, prior to taking a job with the Raiders, he was at ESPN. It was widely reported. He's going to ESPN three weeks before, weeks before. Going to the Raiders, job. Going to the Raiders. Going to the Raiders, sorry. Going to the Raiders. John Gruden called me. I'm talking to John. Normal. We had an hour conversation about building the staff and about <laughs> and about the players and the defense on the team. Why? But but he wanted to know about a guy that he that I knew that he wanted to bring on his staff. But I knew that was all phony. I just, I'm like, why are you calling me about a team? And he says, well, if I take the job, I don't think I'm going to take the job. You already done agreed to take the damn job. But that's who he is. And you have to know that and take it with face value and, and deal with it that way. Now, as far as all the emails go in, in the insensitive language in those emails, he's dead wrong. And what happened to him yesterday should have happened. 
And, and you and I had a right. sidebar conversation. Yeah. And you told me, Stephen A., you said, no, 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 you're wrong, Keyshawn. Right. You told me that. I said, no, over that, Over that one email. Yeah. Over that one email. Right. I said, no, man, there's going to be more that's going to come. Right. And that's he, what you said. He said, man, it's, it's going to be more that's going to come. Right. If they got 650,000 emails mm -hmm. reported, mm -hmm. you mean to tell me only one email? Mm -hmm. No. They had a whole seven-year span. Do you think he can never come back from this, similar to the sentiment Stephen A. said earlier? No. Oh, he'll never coach again. No. Not no. in the National Football League. Never. Now, if you ask me if some college to some certain region or something like that because they feel that certain way, they might in college, but in the pros, no, because it's very difficult to look us in the yeah. eyes mm -hmm. and say to us, we need to play for you and you no. need to be our leader. Right. That, that couple this, of things, you know, and, and, you know, Keyshawn hits it right on the head because, and that if I'm in that locker room, how can I look at John Gruden as my head, as a, as a coach, as a leader of men and go, damn, Behind my back, this is how he really feels about me. Where you're going to have guys that you that that locker room right now, I, I don't know where where they how what they feel, and I'm pretty sure they're probably going to have a, a nice conversation, a good conversation because I think this is a good this, this shows where the team comes together and shows support for one another, regardless of listen. These comments were flat out ignorant and out of bounds. And if th th this, this is a grown man, why, again, going back to the NFL, if the owners were aware of this, because I'm pretty sure, again, because twenty cause at that time there was they had the lockout, they were aware of this situation and the NFL – let it slide. And that's not cool. This is something we have to talk about. Now, I, I want to play another clip from the Let's Foot Talk Football Roundtable. And I have permission from Sean Spencer to play this clip. And I want you guys to hear something that Nick Rosario said that I think was very powerful and much respect. Just listen. Just listen to what he said. Don't mind the laughing by uh, Shada Delilah Crispo. That's just, you know, that's just her. She has a very bubbly personality. And not that she's not laughing at him. She's not, she is, I want to be, she's not laughing at his comments. She's not. I just want to understand that's just her personality. She's very bubbly. She has a bubbly personality.
Yep. You know, and I'll be finished with. I'll finish what she's saying. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I kind of I kind of want to stop it there a little bit because they, 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 they're making my point a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, see the difference in that, and I have to give a shout out to them. John Gruden is no teenage kid. This is a grown man making these comments. If The biggest thing is John Gruden has to look himself in the mirror and he has to accept responsibility for these comments he made. Plain and simple. That's just it. Because how can you, first and foremost, even write that email? And again, I've talked about this with the Atlanta Dream, for example. We are in a society today where everybody is a TMZ a shade room, anything that you put on social media, it's tattooed. It's it's there. You can try to, to, to delete it, but people can screenshot and people can do a lot of things. Sometimes, as the great Herm, Herm Edwards once said, don't press send because that can get that can serve a lot of consequences. Now they're pretty. I'm pretty sure there are more emails in this. I, I'm pretty sure there are. But John Gruden, you know, you he has to take. He just has to 
I, I feel like this is an opportunity for all for all of us to learn and, and, and grow from this and say, look, we have to be better. We have to love one another. We have to educate ourselves. We have to grow as a society and say, look, this is not this this, this does not have any place. Hate, you know, you can't. There's just no place for it. You know, I'm, I'm glad to see you know women as referees in the NFL, NBA. I'm glad to see different things have happened, but it just seems like it's just a you know with John Gruden's comments. We still have some work to do. And the biggest thing that I took away from what, you know, what people have been saying, like, man, it, it, it just, I, I, it's, it's, it's disappointing. And Tony Dungy, you know, made, you know, put out a tweet, you know, but further saying, yo, look, breathing more into it. You know what? That has no place. And, what John Gruden did was the right thing. But you know what? At the end of the day, the NFL owners aren't getting a pass. They, I'm pretty sure they knew about this and said, leave it alone. Let me play it real quick because it actually kind of ties into my – you know, it, it kind of ties into my point also, too. And, and I believe that could be wrong. And, and if, if they're watching, shout out to Sean Spencer and the Washington Football Weekly crew. I know particularly, um, I know they're going to go off on this. Um, check them out tomorrow, 8 p.m., 7 p.m. Central Time. Check them out, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central. Check them out. So let's play the clip real quick. He's the only guy who has a, to say it. So it's very that's difficult. Not, I mean, that's the only part I, I had. Agree, right. I agree with everything y'all are saying. The only problem, yeah. part I had, it's, the problem in, problem in those comments, because that's, Dave, I don't, I don't agree with that, because it to, for you to say that nothing has happened to Washington, and, <laughs> and you didn't say nothing's happened to the Redskins, because you can't say that. We start <laughs> there. We start with everything that happened in the front <laughs> office. We have a dance team. You you ever been to a football, an NFL football game? And there's a dance team, team and man. not cheerleaders into this because your owner is sending to other. You know what I mean? So man. listen, we've been torched, and and yeah, and the play maybe the play is resembling a little bit of that. But so that's yes. But I definitely agree. Hypocrisy is all over the league, absolutely all over it. And the owners it starts with them and goes all the way down. And let's be honest, 10 years ago, Gruden was still that renowned, that famous, you know, great guy. Everybody's hooting and hollering. He won that the Super Bowl. Right. And, and, and what and somebody mentioned, I, I saw some on TV, he won with Tony Dungy's team. He just put a little bit of energy into that team. You know what yeah. I mean? That team yeah. was Tony Dungy's built that yeah. he took to a Super Bowl and played a team that he coached. So he already knew the other team. So. Really quick, I know I, this is just random off the record. No, actually, no. I, I, it's not. It's 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 never mind. Oh, what well, you know? It's, what I mean? it's about the Raiders and the Buccaneers. Because for some, growing up, I used to hate both those teams. Nothing personal, but I'm just like, damn, they can play foot. I like how like Rick, the old, Raiders had the oldest offense, and Tampa had the the most arguably the best defense. And so let's not sit here and, and act like this guy's Vince Lombardi. You know, so that, <laughs> but again, again, like you, like you said, Nick, it's about it's about growth. It's about hey, you know, what you said ten years ago might not be who you are today. We all are growing and trying to get better. Um, so I mean, hey, that's all we can. That's all we can do. That's all we can ask for. Um, but as for him and his, he he did what he needed to do. He stepped down. He yeah. tried to take attention off of. The team, you know, put more himself off the team, let him get out of that. So, hey, let's, 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 that's where we're going to go with that. So, and, and, and I, and again, I just, ah, I second those thoughts. And I'm, I'm just, I'm disappointed. I'm really, it, it, it's, it needs to be accountability overall. Um, and I got it also too. Shout out Randy Moss, the big boss. Um, you know, he was, you know, you know, disgusted. 
uh, Teddy Bruschi. Uh, I, I don't know how what other NFL players are feeling. Uh, it, it, you know, it just how the Raiders as a team they rally together and they say, "Look, out we 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 we, we, we as as players we are a family." We can't let him be a distraction. I'm talking about Coach Gruden. Let's go out here and play Raider football. That's how you move on from this. I'm done talking about John Gruden. Um, around the NFL, nothing is really going on um, except that there was a fun fact that this week, this past, week five was the longest day of football in 50 years. Wow. <laughs> Um, Tula will be back uh, from his injury. Uh, they 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 just they look, they're just really not on feeling him. They, they they're kind of done with uh, Tula. They move. They just <sighs> Clyde Clyde Edwards Hilaire has an MCL sprain, so he's on the injury reserve. Um, the Baltimore Ravens have gotten calls about. Hey, you know, could we have a running back of yours? Because, you know, injuries. These injuries are just crazy, man. So uh, that's really that's been going on. Oh, really quick. That, there was this discussion because uh, that had because the Bills and Chiefs game was delayed because of a, a storm. And it sparked a debate. I know this is just random about, you know, the debate over the perfect peanut butter and jelly ratio, right? So. Pretty much, uh, it was according to um, Michelle Tafula that, quote, they're eating sandwiches, although a couple of complained to me that there's a bit too much peanut butter on the sandwiches. It's like 70-30 with the jelly. They're not enjoying those much. So it pretty much was a debate on Twitter. Um, how do you like your peanut butter and jelly? Uh, me personally, I think you should have on uh, one slice of bread jelly, another slice the peanut butter, and then put jelly on it. And call it a day. <laughs> That's the peanut butter and jelly ratio. Um, NBA news. So uh, Kyrie Irving he will not be practicing or playing with the team until he is vaccinated. Uh, this was announced by Sean Marks, uh, pretty much saying that, uh, you know, it, until he gets, you know, his vaccinated because in, in cities like in New York and California, it's man, it's mandatory you get a you get vaccinated, and um, you know, I. They're pretty much. He's pretty much saying, well, he's not until he gets the shot. He's not going to play. He's not going to be practicing with us. He's not going to do anything. Um, listen, that is his choice. I have been consistent, and I will continue to be consistent again. It is your choice. I'm not here to tell you what you need to do at all. I just encourage people to just do that. Just educate themselves. And just stay safe. Kyrie can't, it should not be forced into something he should be doing. Kyrie Irving, regardless of the, this situation, he is set for life. Now, I applaud what Kyrie Irving has done. You know, for the WBA, HBCUs, helping students get out of debt for college. I applaud those things. But regardless of the situation, this has now become very political. And it's honestly and truthfully getting really, really exhausting to hear. Well, he's not vaccinated, so we're going to rub it down his throat that he needs to get vaccinated. Because, again, and I understand this because the Brooklyn Nets are, are trying to win a championship, and people are feeling like he's holding them back. Now, the Philadelphia 76ers are saying they're not interested in trading for him for now. Okay. 
Andrew Wiggins, you have to understand, Andrew Wiggins is still a baby in this league. Kyrie Irving, he said, Andrew Young, Andrew Wiggins is still building his plate. So I, I, re I really respect where he comes from in this regard. I can't knock him for his choice. That's what he, that's his stance. People should just respect that. Plain and simple. And there should be no discussion about it. Now, I have some other things here. And, you know, it, it just, it's, it's just, he's shown that he is willing. He, he I, you know, again, I, I'm going to, I would just, with, again, with Kyrie, I respect that he's willing to risk millions and something of a personal choice. I respect that. Cause again, like I said, the man set for life, you're not going to force, you just, you should, we shouldn't force that on, on any, on anybody. Just saying we shouldn't force that. Now the Philadelphia 76ers, uh, Ben Simmons reported to training camp. Um, I'm not going to even sit here and act like I didn't know this was coming. Or act like I know this was coming because I did it. I'm 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 shocked. Um because he they said he packed up his house in Philadelphia and you know he pretty much, you know, once he still wants he, you know, he wants to go to Philadelphia. Not Philadelphia, he wants to go to the West Coast, wants to go to LA. Um you know. I like to see what the context of this is a little bit. Um, it seems like somebody talked Ben Simmons, calmed him down. I'm pretty sure there was a conversation to him coming back. I, you know, this is where again, this is where, uh, and again, I'm I'm going to go there with the Atlanta Dream and Tiffany Hayes. You know, this is what leadership and this is what account. This is what leadership looks like, ladies and gentlemen. Quote, this is for this is Joel and me. Personally, I haven't talked to him since the season ended. The big fella stated. Obviously, I tried, but it wasn't successful as a lot of my team as a lot of my teammates have. Like I said, it's unfortunate the whole situation happened. But like I said, we are a better we are a better team with him on the floor. I think there are going to be some adjustments. It doesn't need to be awkward. I mean, we are professionals. We want to win. I want to win. So he gives us the best chance to win. So that's what I'm going to go with. That's what a leader looks like. And that's what not being selfish looks like. Hey, you know what? Let's not make it awkward. He gives us the best chance to win. And I applaud Joel Embiid, particularly as a man coming out and saying that. I truly do. Um. J.R. Smith, uh, shout out to J.R. Smith, man. Uh, he's looking really good. He's actually out there. Golfing. Um, college tournament. So apparently um, during the game, he stepped in a hornet's nest. I hope he's okay. Uh, but he he got stung. He did complete on Tuesday. He's a, he, he attends North, North, the University of North Carolina, AT. Uh, he participated in the Elon Phoenix in, Invitational. Uh, eight over par on the 79. He finished 29th over 240. He is in 81st place out of 84. I uh, saw some clips. He looked really good. Um, I'm really proud of the fact that, you know, once again, um, you know, he's going back to school and, and getting an education, I, which I, I, I think is very important uh, to me. In my personal opinion, I think as an I think education gets you further in life than throwing a football shooting a baseball or hitting a home run. That's just my personal opinion.
but he looked good out there in the golf in, in the golf game. But I hope he's okay. Um, hope you know with the getting stung by the Hornets, but looked really good. Um, LiAngelo Ball will sign a G League contract and will be eligible for the draft on the 23rd for the G League. Uh, he definitely had a good uh, pre uh, summer league. He averaged nine, not ten points a game, but it wasn't enough to get him a contract. So we'll see what he looks like in the G League. Uh, what else is going on? So this was interesting. Um, with uh, actually, no, I'm sorry, that's the WNBA. I apologize. So we're going to transition into game into the WNBA game. WNBA Finals Game 2. Um, I wanted to talk about real quick that the travel, according to Kathy Engelberg, that the league was covering the expenses of the travel. Um, Diana Taurasi, you had after Game 5, congratulations to her and Penny Taylor, uh, had, uh, you know, her, their second child was born. And Diana was really pissed. Um, yeah, they pay for everything. This WNBA, we pay for it. This was her quote. It's frustrating because the there are people that would like to help. It's against CBA rules and this. Now, I understand this is standard to make sure everyone's on the same playing field. So, thank you to my Russian buddies for that. Um, well, because she did actually, I'm taking. She played overseas in Russia, so where she earned uh, damn near wow. Her annual salary is like seven seven thousand, and she flew private. Um, you know, I think a lot of it also too. They said by the time they got to Phoenix, they left Las Vegas Saturday. They should have left. It was like about ten, according to the article that I read, and pretty much they didn't even get a chance to practice. So. You weren't so I think some of that played a role as well. Um and also too Diana did not get a lot didn't get a lot of sleep. So man, uh I, I really do hope she got some rest. I do. But yeah, you know, we gotta fix these things. And again, I think a lot of it just it starts with the CBA. It kind of says a little bit more about um, the league itself. So now we get, we get we got some work to do. I mean, again, we can talk about expansions to different cities, but if we're not. If we if we can't, we really can't get to that step unless we really talk about the hardline issues that they really have to be addressed. In my personal opinion, um, now. Game two, there are some things that are going to have to change. Now, for Phoenix in game one, fatigue and injuries played a role. Sophie Cunningham is supposed to be back this game. Now, fatigue set a role because I just said they came off the plane from Vegas Saturday and didn't get an opportunity to practice. And again, Diana had, you know, with her wife Penny Taylor and the birth. You know, I'm pretty sure there was just no rest. I mean, she probably got some rest, but it just wasn't enough. Okay. With Kia Nurse out, that also with a torn ACL, that also matters. When I look at, I had to go look at the box score. In the first quarter, after the first quarter, they shot 10 of 19. The the score was 25 to 20. They turned the ball over 40, I mean, 40, 14 times, excuse me. And scored 52 points. They were 17 of 43. Ladies and gentlemen, if I do the math, that's 40, that's 39.5% as a cohesive unit. They couldn't defensively keep Chicago out of the paint, off the glass. You know, I and, and fatigue is, you know, you never want to use that as an excuse, but that's again, trust your eyes. That, that's what we saw. Now, I think there's a couple things that will get cleaned up. Don't don't get me wrong. Once those things are, are cleaned up, 
I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll see a different Phoenix team. You will. Believe that. Now, a couple things that I also saw going into this that I, I saw from game one, I think needs to continue is this. When you look at what Chicago's doing, Kalia Copper, I, I mean, my Lord, the, the, the girl can, I mean, they're just, the girl can play. I mean, Phoenix showed her no respect on defense. Um, they gave her space in the perimeter, two threes. She got to the lane, even when they tried to crowd her. She finished or she got fouled. Um, they couldn't keep her off the glass. I mean, she had she played, she had 15 second chance points, two steals. Now, it's a statistic, and I found this out. The 14 and 6 when Copper gets 15 points, and the 5 and 1 when she scores 20. Those are going to be the keys. Steffi Dolson definitely also too has even though she started pretty much the most of the season, I think just because of athleticism in my personal opinion, but also too, I think she can I think I think her coming off the bench is better. Um they just need a little bit more. Well, I take it back. I would like to see her get more minutes because of her strength. But I'm not sure if it's match. I think it's more of matchups. Let me not say let me not let me not say athleticism. I think it's more strength. Now, she definitely matches up well with Brittany Griner. She can space the floor. She did it here in Washington. She can shoot the ball. The the bench is also going to be the key for Chicago. Brittany does not like to shy away from the paint. So that's going to give Steffi, and they can even give it Azare more touches to shoot from the perimeter, shoot outside the paint. That's going to be another key for Chicago to win this game. Now, again, I've said it, the key for Phoenix to, to win this game, game two, they're going to have to come out and, and punch Chicago in the mouth. I'm talking about in terms of shooting because they came out, they came out ready. They came out fire, and I don't know what what happened. Um, I just felt like the momentum just really shifted after the second quarter, and I think that with Sophie Cunningham coming back. I think that's going to be key because she scored 21 points against New York Liberty. Trust your eyes. Phoenix defensively is also going to be key. Now, Brianna Turner, yes, Brianna Turner, Brittany Griner, and Scott Lincoln Smith, they have shown great defense this whole season. But, ladies and gentlemen, this team gave up. Hey, Lucinda, how are you? Good to see you. This same team gave up 91 points Sunday. That that can't happen. And allowed Chicago shoot 53% from the field. Now, I'm not saying they got to re replicate what happened against Las Vegas in game five and game three, where they held Las Vegas to 60. But again, obviously with Ken Nurse and, and, and fatigue. That that plays a role, and Wednesday I see a better I see a better Phoenix team, more rest, um, and also too. You know, they got to get one here. They have to win this game. So we will see what it looks like for sure. But those I think are the keys that I think both have to do in order to win this game. Steffi Dolson and for, for, again, for Chicago. Candace Parker is she she's she is she's she came to play. You know, when she decided to take her talents to Chicago, 
regardless of a of, of of the team, this she 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 was ready for this moment. Plain and simple. Um, again, like I said, Steffi Dolson, St- Dolson, and Azura, they are keys for Chicago. They both have to be ready for Brittany Griner. Regardless whoever it was, because Brittany Griner 6'9, Liz Cambage is 6'8. They both have to be ready. Now, we're gonna really see from again Brianna Turner, Brittany Griner, Steffi Dolson, Azari Stevens. We're gonna see how those two matchups look in game two. But with that being said, I'm gonna give the Phoenix Mercury the win in game two. Guarantee. So that should be that should actually I, I can't wait to see what that what that looks like. I really can't wait to see what it looks like. Um, and the game comes on tomorrow. Make sure I have the time right. I think it's eight o'clock on ESPN. I'm sorry, nine o'clock on ESPN. I apologize. Nine o'clock on ESPN, ladies and gentlemen. Again, if you have not had an opportunity to watch a WMA game, just watch it. Just, just, just give it, just give it a chance. I'm telling you, it has been great basketball, especially these playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. Great basketball so far. Um, wow. So we have a new partnership. The WNBA, Natasha African, Natasha Cloud, and Ty Young and Sydney Colston. She partnered with Athletes Unlimited to launch a women's professional basketball league where the goal is for them to be here. They don't have to go overseas. They don't have to play here all around. Um, you know, that's, I, I, you know, and also too, it's actually great for us fans because especially when some of these girls like go overseas, it's really hard to really track like their stats. Like I know, for example, Colony Brown, is in Turkey, and like I've been trying to like really follow her games. Like the one game that I follow was her versus uh, Danielle Adams, and she went off. And I'm like, okay, I haven't seen any much of anything of that. Alana Coates is another example. Um, I think this is actually pretty good. Uh, I like this. I, I, I would. I'm really encouraged to see where this goes because I said it for the record. I'm not a fan of these girl. The girls going overseas and having not only to play overseas but then come back. Some of them have Olympic com- uh, commitments, and that is exhausting on their bodies. That's just my personal opinion. So, can you shout out to Natasha Cloud, Ty Young, and Sydney Colson uh, as they're uh, the the first three players that were serve on the players' executive community committee. Excuse me. This is sports debut in January of next year. So, um, I cannot wait to see what this looks like. Actually, I'm going to play you guys a clip of it so you can see this is like the, the, the little trailer. So I want to show you guys a clip of what, of what it says. So check this out. Not often you get a chance to see a revolution televised, but that's what we're going to see. The best players in the world playing a totally different form of the game that they love. We're about to start a new model of professional sports and a new way to bring athletes and fans together. So welcome to the beginning of Athletes Unlimited, a project that was built with you, for you. It was not always easy. There were roadblocks along the way, but not even a pandemic could slow this thing down. So I can't wait to really see what that looks like, ladies and gentlemen. I can't wait to see. So shout out to them and, and coming up with the um, the idea for that. So um, also, too, got a shout out. I know Kevin. I think Kevin Durant's also part of that. 
on the new basketball league. Um, Taylor Rooks is also as well. So definitely women's basketball got bigger and that, and that is respect. I like that. Last topic of the night, the Atlanta dream have hired former WNBA ball player, Tanisha Wright as their head coach. Um, you know, I, I have to give again a special shout out to Rashad Milligan as he was on with me. We talked about the things that needed to happen. And um, it started with hiring a coach and a GM. I like Tanisha Wright. You know, she started off uh, as an assistant coach for the Charlotte 49ers. Uh, that was for the University of North Carolina's at Charlotte basketball team. She was assistant coach. Last this, this past season and last year, she was a head assistant coach under Bill Lynn Beer in Las Vegas. Um, she's WNBA champion. She's played for the Seattle Storm, New York Liberty, and the Minnesota Lynx, and also played for New York Liberty in 2019. She, ran, she announced her retirement. Um, but I think this is a great hiring. Um, you know, this is, I think, a good hiring because, one, we're still looking for accountability. We want to see growth of not only accountability, but also integrity, because the way the situation in Atlanta has unfolded, uh, you have not seen that at all. Um, you know, I think this is the start of something good in Atlanta. Uh, this was her quote. It's been an honor. It's an honor to be chosen as the head coach for the Atlanta Dream. And I'm excited to play a role in building a successful organization centered around player experience. I have been a part of championship teams and understand what it takes to win in this league. I look forward to bringing my talents to this franchise and helping the dream achieve success. Now, I hope that this signing persuades Kennedy Carter to stay. Um, and I do, I'd like to see where this goes more with the Atlanta dream, but you know, they started to hire a GM. Um, I also too want to kill some noise that was said, um, I'm, I'm coming to the defense of, and I'm coming to the defense of Kalani Brown. Cause I don't know, again, I don't know where this narrative came from. And again, like I told you, this is what I'm talking about. The, the media, you know, in, in the narratives that it makes. So if you remember in that fight, that, that clip that I showed you guys, right? Now, the, the, and I can't show it because of <laughs> they're asking you got to sign it. But it's a video of, of of the video of the fight, and in the in the headline it said Atlanta Dream players in all out brawl. Courtney Williams, Crystal Bradford, Kalani Brown involved. Kalani Brown was a peacemaker. She didn't throw any punches. Okay, because if you think about it. See, again, this is what bothers me about the media. Instead of really having all the facts, look at the video for yourself. I didn't see punches. So I think whoever that news station is to make to say that, that article, that make that headline, and not really looking, oh, she didn't throw a punch. She was just a peacemaker to, to, to break up the fight. Uh, we got to be careful when we when we try to attack people's characters and stuff. That's not cool. Um, so... <sighs> Uh, with that being said, that's going to end episode 18 of the podcast. Um, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more, be sure to give the be sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment below your thoughts. Uh, y'all let me know. Y'all let me know your topics. Give me more topics, different suggestions to talk about. Uh, y'all let me know your thoughts in the comments of the topics I touched on this episode. Share the podcast. Uh, we're on the road to 100 subs. Thank you for those that sub. Thank you for the, the kind words. Thank you for the support. Thank you for, you know, continuing to motivate me to do this, uh, what I do. I just I love to talk sports, and this is my passion. My goal is to be a, become a sport is to become a sports journalist. Uh, radio and TV is my focus, and um, I have to thank each and every one of you for the support and the love that you give me in this channel. So, um, or really quick, I just want to just um, make this up. So, I have a clip. It's Vic, it's Vic Fangio. And um, on the sidelines, when we played the Denver Broncos last week, um, 
because some people were saying, well, why do you, what's that in the when you play in the beginning? It's it's him on the sidelines uh, cussing because we got the three yards to tie the record for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's what the video is. Um, so with that being said, I'm out. Peace. Stay up. Have a good night. I will see y'all probably Wednesday, tomorrow. Oh, it actually is Wednesday. Excuse me. <laughs> You'll see me either later today or Thursday. Peace, y'all. Stay up. Get down! Get down! First of all, listen, uh, it's interesting about all these young guys today. They never call on us and say, hey, thanks for the kind word and telling me how great a player I am. But when they play like crap and we call them out, they, we don't know what we're talking about. Listen, I'm easy to find, but I get sick of these guys complaining. Uh, these you, young guys, they never call us and say, when a coach is wrong, I'm going to call him out. But when players are wrong, I'm going to call them out. But listen, I'm going to criticize guys that they deserve it. And listen, they can kiss my ass if they don't like it. <laughs>